So now we are going to see how we can use Anning Dynamics to create a simulation for the hair. So if we go back to the Anning Blueprint, we do the whole dynamics directly in here, uh, which I personally find very easy to set up. And this is one of my favorites. Um, so if I add a node called Anning Dynamics here, uh, let's just connect this and this one. So here I'm going to be editing the rotations and also the translations of the specific bones I will name in here. So I like to change this to bone relative because it just uh, the space for this example works better. Um, then relative I put from where the movement is coming from. So in this case, I am choosing the head bone. And then the actual bone that is going to be added. Um, so let's say hair tree. If I press compile and save, you will see there is now a little cube in here. Um, you can show all the uh, debugs in here. I'll just select all of them so we can. it's easy to visualize. And so what we can do now is um, if we go back to the Anim Blueprint and we actually put an animation here to play, I can play it just direct in here. Play, walk, yes. So just temporarily, I want to see if this is working. I'll just have this animation playing in here and I can also change the rate to be 0 05. Oh, no, play rate. <laughs> There you go. Cool. So if I go back to my Anning Dynamics here, I can start editing how this simulation will actually work. Um, so there are basically a gravity and the limits for uh, rotation, translation. Um, and then I can also have some collisions here. Uh, let, but let's, let's just go through the, the main ones. Um, so there is a planar limit here, which is a collision. I will just switch that off for now. And here is where I can change the size of the cube. So let's say if I change to 15, it will have more influence into it. Um, so far, you probably can still not say it. If I can also change the offset. So if I change this to 10, for example, in the X axis, you see that then the rotation, the translation will come from up here. And here are the constraints. So at the moment, it's all limited as linear, which is the translation. And the angular is also all set to zero. So I would just put here, just as an example, minus 10 as minimum and maximum as 10. So let's see. So you see that that already like changed the the translation of this. Um, if I move back the joint offset, it doesn't change anything. <laughs> uh, but in this case, we don't want it to change translation wise. We want it to actually change rotation. So if I change this here to let's say minus forty five and plus forty five. Then I get this debug here, which is showing me how much of these angles are changing. Um, I can also remove them here. And then what I have to do as well is because at this moment it's just influencing one point, bone, but what I want is I actually want the whole chain. So I'll just select chain end and I'll select chain six. So now you can see how the rotation is uh, working for all the bones. And again, if I change this to, let's say, 50, it will behave differently. Um, if I change it to 15, we go back to how we had. Um, these settings you have to change for each individual bone, um, which is a little bit annoying to set up. Uh, but I'm going to put the values here that I know that works uh, best. So I'm rotating from 0 to maximum 45 because um, 
I don't want to actually to go up that much um, and then I'm doing the same for each of these bones so constraint setup changes to zero constraint setup zero constraint setup zero see how this looks yeah I think it looks quite nice and we need to do the same for the other hair, the other chain. So we can copy and paste and just change the bones in here and then connect these again. So both sides now are moving. Uh, you will notice that we'll have the same problem of colliding with the body, right? So the way we create collisions in here is through a planner or a spherical. Um, so spherical limit will create a, a sphere into the bone that we pass. So I would say spine two, and I'll say that is radius uh, 50. So we can visualize it, how it's working here. But then we can also use a planar limit, which is um, Let me just remove this debug here, it's very cool limit. And then we can use the planner, which is this one here. Uh, use planner limits, and this will create a rectangle, again, at the bone that we placed. Um, so you can see here, at the moment it doesn't make sense, so we need to kind of rotate this to be with this arrow here painting, uh, pointing backwards, so we will collide with the hat. I'm not quite sure how much, yeah, perfect, X, <laughs> X90 is how much I had to move. Let's say that I want it to be actually a little bit inclined on the diagonal, so if I move this to 20, say, oh, minus 20. And then let's say I could also move uh, a little bit translation wise. Let's not this one. This one. Yeah, cool. Uh, you would s you see that the planar collision it would still go through it a little bit. It's not perfect. Uh, but yeah, it's a way of editing this. Um, this type of dynamics and yeah it's pretty simple to set up so once that's done let's just go back to copy pose because we don't want the animation playing sample honey and here we'll call honey dynamics so if we go back here we can see uh yeah the hair is moving. It's colliding quite a lot, but that's because I didn't push the um, planner too far. Actually, let's just change it to the sphere and see if that works best. Um, This one doesn't have it. You can also, I believe we can just copy and paste, uh, copy all properties in this category. And then if we come here and paste, no. Copy and paste, there you go. So then you get the same settings for both sides. And yeah, it looks slightly better, but that's it. So that's how you use Anning Dynamics for this type of uh, simulation.